Alright, like I said in my last video where I showed the Canon Vixia HG20 that I had just got, I mentioned that I was getting a couple more cameras, and they're both JVC cameras. This one is a VHSC camcorder, this one is another hard drive camcorder, so we're going to take a look, I'm trying to decide which one I want to open first here. Let's take a look at the hard drive camera first. I dumped some of the packing peanuts out already, but there's more in here. Right, at least it's packaged well, though. Let me open this bubble wrap up. Well, that was everything in that box. Here it is. More bubble wrap to take off, but very nicely packaged. Alright, well, here's what we got. Got a remote control. Uh, the Canon that I got yesterday has remote control as well. The charger. And there's the connector on the end of it. That looks... I don't know if that's the same as the other JVCs. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a different connector than the other two JVCs that I have. It's got a nice HDMI cable. And mini USB to regular USB cable. Let's hook it up to the computer. And here is the camcorder. It is a hard drive camcorder just like the Canon that I'm using right now. It has an external microphone input and uh, it has a video light which is nice. Looks like the lens cover is manual. Yep, the switch is on the bottom right here. Stereo microphone on the top, CMOS sensor just like the Canon that I'm using right now, zoom, still picture, record button, wonder how good the battery is still, I think this is about a 13 year old camera at this point, we'll, I'll find out, composite video and audio out as component as well, HDMI and DC in, let's see right here, this is a flap, this is where the USB is on the front. It's kind of interesting. This is a 40 gigabyte hard drive in this camera and it's got a micro SD card slot as well. Made in Japan. Sorry if I'm shaking. It's been kind of shaky lately for some reason. Yep. Here's the model number GZ-HD10U. Nice metal threaded tripod mount right there and then there's the battery again let's open the screen and it turns on right away and I'm gonna go ahead and set the date and time this has a joystick on it right there just like the cannons that I have um, the uh, newer JVC that I have the high definition one the, the blue one has just buttons right there and the screen doesn't there's no buttons around the screen and it's not a touch screen this is also not a touch screen at all and you can see it has an audio meter that's going up as I talk so that's interesting and it looks like I've got a little bit of battery power and five hours and 13 minutes of record time on that hard drive that's pretty similar to what the Canon has um, and that's of course on the current video setting. We'll see what else it's uh, what else it has. This one is kind of unique because it's not 1920 by 1080. It's 1440 by 1080, which you would think would be a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but it is 16 by 9, and that's because the pixels are elongated. They're basically rectangular shaped. And that fills it to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So well, that's pretty interesting. Um, so there's the buttons on the display panel. And I believe the push button should turn on the video light. Um, actually, that turns on manual mode. I'll, I'll have to figure out how to turn on the video light on this. I got some buttons there. Here's the date that the clock is defaulting to, 2008. So that may be when this one was from. 
I'm going to set this. It's uh, pretty easy to set. It's very similar to the, the way I set it on the Canon that I made a video of yesterday. I got the lens cover open and we're getting a display. The clock is set properly now. So that's good. And XP is the highest video quality you can get with this. So I'll show you that right now. Yeah, we're on XP. Um, we got 10 times optical zoom. If we turn any of those other eyes on, it'll be utilizing digital zoom. Digital image stabilization. I don't think this one has optical image stabilization. That unlike some of the newer camcorders, it has only one option for digital image stabilization. It doesn't have the so-called dynamic feature that some of them do, um, which also makes the picture a little bit smaller when you turn that on. So, it has a, or I should say, it has a more narrow field of view. Pretty easy to navigate through the menu turn demo mode off video output is in 16 by 9 I'm going to keep it there component output will turn that to 1080i it's on it was on 480i HDMI output Just leave that on auto clean up hard drive format hard drive format SD card remote leave the operation sound on I guess um, and then we got a factory reset and a quick restart setting I'll leave that on I think for the quick restart it just uh, when you close the screen it just goes to sleep it doesn't completely shut down right away um, yeah. so that's the menu index which also gives us it's like battery information and hard drive information so we got a completely empty hard drive and our max recording time if we go all the way to the lowest quality setting would be 18 hours and 31 minutes mid range is 7 hours and 24 minutes and high quality is 5 hours and 13 minutes which is where I'm going to keep it okay I'm trying to figure out where the uh, we got some more uh, battery information if we press that again. That's our current charge. We got about 30 minutes of time. And try and figure out where the button is for the light. Alright, so let's turn the light on. Kind of hard to see. That There we go. That's better. You turn the joystick over here to the left. And as you can see, the light is now on. And if you do that again, it goes to auto kind of hard to see, there we go, now it's on auto, and then there we go, it's off again, and we can switch to manual mode if we put the joystick to the right, focus settings on the bottom, and then uh, looks like for the top we got, I think that's uh, going to be either exposure or white balance, correct me if I'm wrong. There's an actual power button right there if you don't just want to wait for it to shut off when you close the display. And to switch between video and still image, we turn that switch. And this one does record still images in 16 by 9 if you want it to. It's got obviously a lot of capacity for photos right now. And we can change that to fine and standard. I'm just going to leave it on fine. Image size. We got 1920 by 1080, 640 by 480, and 1440 by 1080. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Ten times optical zoom if I didn't mention that already. And it looks uh, like the zoom is working nicely. So let's go back to video mode. Yep, everything is working well, so I'm going to just take a look under this cover right here and see the ports. Sorry, it's dark. I'm not getting very consistent lighting here. There's our 
HDMI, that's some sort of weird component port that I've never seen, and uh, our composite video and audio on the top. It's got an accessory shoe on the top. As you can see, this uh, cover just pops off. And let's go to playback and see. All right. So we got nothing on there right now. That's the uh, playback button right there. Delete button. This is the switch between auto and manual modes. Quick review. And looks like this uh, toggles something when it's in manual mode. And then the power button again. So I'm going to switch over to this camera and record with it. Here's the a view from the front. And here we are recording with the JVC Avario hard disk drive camcorder. This is the camera I was just using. It's the Canon Vixia HG20 with the hard drive and the camera flash. It looks like the battery is running down on this JVC so I'm probably not going to be able to record too much longer but so far the low light performance seems pretty good at least based on what I can see on the screen and there's the zoom. I'll zoom in again to that light bulb. Zoom in on the VCR thought that'd be appropriate since uh, the new the next camera is a VHS camera and I'll turn on the video light you can see that made a little bit of a difference turn it off there's my filthy workbench so yeah it's a pretty good video light I'm gonna turn the main lights off real quick and we'll see how big of a difference that makes so this is pretty dark. It's actually, as far as I can tell right now, the picture is not very noisy, and that's that's good. So there's the video light. That's helping quite a bit, actually. Um, obviously, on a dark brown air conditioner like that, it's not gonna help as much. But if we go down there to the white parts on that air conditioner, it actually is illuminating it quite nicely. So I'm impressed with that, and it's on auto right now. Let me turn the light back on. And it just, it's still on right now, I guess it's still too dark. Okay, I'm looking at it, yep, it's still on. Just turned off now. So it takes a little bit to turn off. But yeah, this thing is working nicely. And, um, yep. We'll charge this up and then I'm going to go back to that one, that one and we're going to unbox this. VHS camcorder. I'm really excited to see that one. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the VHS camera. The JVC hard disk drive camera is charging. So let's pull this out of here. Got a nice case. And that's all that's in that box. And I'll probably keep that there. This is the table is really dirty and crappy looking. So. Um, hey, let me figure this out. Alright, the battery went down on the Canon, so I had to switch over to the JVC hard drive camcorder, which is plugged in right now. Well, let's, uh, take a look and see what we got in here. Wanted one of these for a while, ever since I first saw one. And here we go, this is a JVC VHSC camcorder with a halogen video light on the front. That's pretty interesting. Don't see that much anymore. We got a microphone on the bottom. Lens cap. There is our lens. And I'm pretty sure the halogen spotlights in these are pretty bright based on the test footage that I've seen of these cameras on YouTube. There is the model number. It is a JVC GR SXM 330U VHSC camcorder. Got the battery on the back. 
has a viewfind uh, electronic viewfinder that flips up, but it also has an LCD display on it as you would expect. A battery release switch. It has an automatic light too. And I'm sure that's digital image stabilization that this has. Let's take a look at our information we got on the stickers. Pretty sure this has a CCD image sensor. SVHS quality on VHS cassette. Professional digital picture technology. That's uh, not sure what that means, but time-based corrector and color noise reduction. It's got a TFT LCD display, digital signal processing, and super VHS. So this can handle or can work on the uh, higher quality compact VHS tapes. So yeah, metal tripod mount. Close this. It's got it does uh, click shut, so you have to press a button to open it. It's got this strap right here, and then uh, we have the nice hand strap on this side. And there's our playback speaker. This thing is pretty cool. 400 times digital zoom. In does have optical zoom, although I'm not exactly sure how much it is. Take a look at our buttons on the top. That's to turn the light on and off. We got off, auto, and on. And we got some with like digital effects. Yep. Night Alive, which is sort of like a night mode. Um, it's not like Sony Night Shot. It's different. I think it just changes the shutter speed. We'll find out exactly what that does. And we got the eject button for the tape and we have stop button, rewind, play pause, and fast forward buttons for the tape. Got a roller wheel which I guess is to navigate through the menu as it says right there and that's probably to uh, change brightness. A snapshot button for taking still images. Stabilizer button for probably the uh, digital image stabilization and a volume switch so you can change the volume. And we'll open up the viewfinder or pull it up and as you can see it tilts in whatever direction you want it to be in. So we have composite video and audio as well as an S video output. Here's the DC input for the battery charger and the record button. Let me turn on the video light on this camera so you can see that better. Got playback, off, auto, and manual modes. And in the center is the big red record button. Alright, looks like we've seen everything on the outside. Let me try and get this set up and see if it turns on with the battery power that it's got right now. If it doesn't, I'll plug it in and we'll test it out. Alright, let's turn it on. And to do that, I'm going to close this little port door here. To do that, we just switch this to... It's kind of hard to see. There you go. We just turn the dial to one of the modes. And there we go. It's on. It's showing what it's seeing. And right here we have our eject button. Opens the tape door. We can put the tape in and then close it. And it looks like we actually got some decent battery left. I'm surprised by that. Wonder if this is the original battery. But uh, yeah. Let me go ahead. And this uh, volume rocker is also the zoom switch. So as you can see, the zoom is working. Not sure how much of that is uh, optical zoom and how much of it's digital zoom, but it definitely does have optical zoom, as you can see. Alright, let's turn the light on and see how that works. 
And there we go. It's a nice bright halogen light bulb. It has an auto function. You know, we'll just turn it off for now. We can change the brightness of the display with this uh, little dial right here, or this little, yeah, dial. There's some more information about the, or another, not really more information, but another sticker that mentions the Night Alive thing. And uh, the viewfinder has adjustments on it for focusing it. To switch to the electronic viewfinder, which is on right now, as you can see, you just close the screen with it still on, and it switches over to that. Now here's the uh, button to turn on the digital image stabilization, and when I do that, it's kind of hard to see, but the field of view gets a little bit more narrow. <clears throat> so that's pretty much how it is on most camcorders with uh, digital image stabilization, at least the ones that I've had experience with. Now I do want to adjust the date, but I'm not... Um, able to get into the menu. I think you're supposed to be able to press this dial in and it should go to the menu, but um, it doesn't for some reason. So I'm going to have to figure that out. I don't think there's any menu button on the remote. <coughs> no, I don't think so. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. And I'm going to put the tape in and we'll see how this works. I don't have a capture card yet, so it's going to be a little bit of a delay before I'm able to put the footage from this on the computer, but I'm going to start recording with it and we'll test out some of the functions. <coughs> the Night Alive thing is either off or auto. Right now it's I just turned it off again, and uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and put the tape in and test this out. Got the wrapper off of it, comes in a case. <clears throat> you can write down your information on there for your recording. Alright, let me uh, get this out of here. Here's what the tape looks like out of its package it's just a little VHS tape. I've never used one of these before, but I'm going to open up the tape drawer and put this in. Alright, I went ahead and plugged the charger into the camera. Still had some battery life left, but I don't want it to go down. So I got the tape in there. I'm pretty sure it's in there the right way. Let me close that. Yep, I'm sure it's in there the right way because it closed. And you can hear it doing something. Alright, I am going to start recording with this, see if it works properly. <clears throat> I'll start a recording real quick before I pick it up and just uh, see what we get. And it's recording, we got 31 minutes of record time. I'm pretty sure that's on the uh, highest quality setting that you can put these on. Alright, I just had a problem here. The camcorder displayed an error message saying that it was in safeguard mode. And when I pulled the tape out, it had actually eaten part of the tape. So, I'm going to have to try this again and see if that happens again. I hope it doesn't. So, yeah, let's try this again. Alright, so it keeps eating the tape, and it says it needs a head cleaning, so hopefully that solves the issue. Um, so I just did some looking up online, and a lot of people were saying that uh, you should use a cleaning tape when stuff like this happens, so... That's what I'm going to do, because I don't see anything broken in there, so... Yeah... That's disappointing. I really wanted to use this today, but we'll get a fix, hopefully. Alright, well, even though we're having some issues with the tapes, I was able to get into the menu 
And to do that, I just had to switch to manual mode. And now I'll press this down, and as you can see, I have the full menu. And we also have our buttons up here, and these are working now too, so that's good. Surprisingly, the date was already correct. The time is just a little off. It's, it says 11.01. It's actually 11.45 right now, but other than that, settings are correct. When we're in manual mode, we do have more options for Night Alive. Right now it's on auto. Now it's on 10 times, 60 times, and then off. I'll show you the menu. So we got the camera menu. And we go to the next menu, we have our first system menu, our record mode, so that's the quality, you get SP or EP, I'm keeping it on the higher quality one, which is SP. Digital zoom modes, or function. Widescreen, which just does letterboxing. Super VHS mode, tape length, and yeah, this set uh, the correct tape length, this is a 30 and the display is on full screen so our next hang on a second here's the next system menu so I'm glad that's working and it can go down to return to get out of that and the date is displayed and so is the time Now I just need to fix the tape eating issue. I turned digital zoom off in the menu, so now we just get optical zoom, and it looks like it goes up to 16 times. Alright, here's a little update. I uh, tried to tape out some more, and unfortunately, it kept eating the tape, and um, yeah, it kind of broke it. So. What I'm thinking is that this is just a bad tape, and the take-up spool isn't working properly. Because so what's supposed to happen, this uh, only turns in one way when it's not inside of the uh, camcorder. When it is, there's supposed to be there's a little uh, thing that pushes on there, and when that pushes in, this thing can turn in either direction. And what I'm thinking is this tape is just screwed up and that's not working properly so I'm gonna order some more tapes and try it out and uh, another thing that supports that theory is the fact I talked to the guy who I got this from and he said it was working fine with the tapes that he tried it with so um, I'm pretty sure it's just this tape which I mean is kind of weird because it's an actual JVC tape you'd think it would work just fine the JVC camcorder, but, um, you know, anything is possible, so, gonna get some new tapes, and I think it'll work just fine at that point, it records fine, I mean, it recorded a little bit of video on, you know, what I had recorded, and I was able to watch it before the tape got all bunched up, and, um, it just stopped playing, but other than that, everything on this camera works fine, I was able to, I charged it up, don't know how long the battery is going to last on this thing, but um, did find out it's a nickel cadmium battery, which is typical for something from this time period. I'm pretty sure this is from like 2000 or something like that. Um, and yeah, everything else on the camera works just fine, so I guess I could turn it on again. Let's see here. We go, we're on. And we got a picture, the zoom works nicely, autofocus works nicely. So everything on this camera is working fine. It's just uh what I'm hoping was just a bad tape. Got a full battery right now. Let's see if uh it'll focus on that. Looks like it's trying. 
I'm using my Samsung waterproof mini camcorder right now and the autofocus isn't always the best so you really can't see much of anything in there but I looked in there with a flashlight and everything looks you know perfectly fine nothing's missing nothing's broken so pretty sure it was just that tape close that yeah I'm looking forward to getting my new tapes so I can test this thing out just want to take another look at the tape this right here is the take up spool where I have my thumb and like I said before there's something in the camcorder that pushes into this slot right here which moves the gear up and it allows it to spin in both directions because right now in the position that it's in it can only go like this it does not allow it to turn in the other direction which is obviously necessary for it to work in this camcorder and there's nothing wrong with the piece that pushes up on that and the gear that engages with the take up spool looks fine too so like I said before I'm thinking it's just this tape that's got problems if I push on this really hard you can see I get can get it to turn in both directions but it's supposed to have something pushing on it right here as well so yeah I'm hoping really really hoping this is just a bad tape because um, it, it actually ate it several times and I was able to get it out but um, last time it just uh, it just snapped as you can see it was kind of chewing it up in another spot let's see how the autofocus on this Samsung camcorder works Kind of hard for me to tell on the little screen, but it looks like it's trying. Yeah, it's sort of focused on that. I don't know if it will do it when it's really close up. No, it's uh, sort of trying. I'm going to stop the recording and see if I can get it to do it when it's not recording. Well, it took a while, but it did it. It actually focused. And this, I'm holding this pretty close, so... Obviously now it's going to be out of focus. Let's see how long it takes to focus on a distance. That didn't take very long at all, actually. So, I'm kind of impressed like that. haven't really ever used the camera that I'm recording with right now, but... I think I'm going to start using it a little more now, because... It's kind of convenient. It has a bad rolling shutter effect when you move it side to side quickly, but if you don't do that, it's just fine, so... Yep. Alright, here's another little test of the Samsung camcorder. This is a Samsung HMX W300 waterproof and shockproof camcorder. I'm going to start this ceiling fan up and see how it looks when it's uh, filming something like that. See if the rolling shutter effect causes any problems with this. It doesn't appear to be on the camera screen, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, that That looks pretty normal. So, yeah. Turn that off. And this only has this digital zoom. There's the digital zoom all the way in. Here's the Samsung camcorder that I was just using. It records in 1080p Full HD at 30 frames per second, and like I said, it's shock and waterproof. It's got uh, video mode and still image mode. I think it's like 5.5 megapixels for still image. Um, but yeah, it's got this. I, I've already showed this. It's got a little flip-out USB plug. Tripod mount, which is nice. 
micro SD card slot and the HDMI out. So, um, this is a, uh, you know, a pretty nice camera, aside from the rolling shutter effect. You don't see much of these, uh, this form factor of camcorder anymore because phones have kind of replaced these, which I'm using right now to record this video. But I do prefer to use a dedicated camera, and most of the time I use camcorders that are in this format. Obviously they're not this big because they use flash memory, or in some cases, like a couple of the ones I have, they have hard drives in them. But, um... Sometimes it's nice to have something a little bit more compact. Obviously this thing just fits in your pocket got an aqua mode which is for filming underwater. Yep, I'll turn it on. And there you go. And this one does have stereo microphones. And the video quality on this is just fine if you're in decent lighting, and like I said, you don't move it a lot because it has a bad rolling shutter effect if there's a lot of movement. But if you don't do that, it's just fine. Another thing I wanted to mention about this camera is it's, you know, it's very durable, so use something like this, you don't have to worry about damaging your really expensive smartphone. It's also waterproof, which some smartphones are not. And, um, nice thing about this is when you hold it in this orientation, it actually records horizontal video like it should. The thing that I really don't like about, you know, when people record videos on their phones is if they hold it vertically, it records vertical video, which doesn't look right. Um, you know, if you have a smartphone, you should be holding it like this to record video. But with this, you hold it like this and it records horizontal video. So that's, that's good.